All right, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for joining our virtual event today as part of the Internet 2 online series, introducing the Internet 2 cloud scorecard. Uh, we're really excited to be here uh, today and, and thank you for thank you for joining us. So before we get started, uh, I just want to go over a few uh, a few logistical points to help uh, help facilitate our webinar. Actually, we'll go. Uh, um, so all participants have been muted and videos have been um, turned off. Um, there is a Q&A tool within Zoom. I think we're all familiar with Zoom by now, um, but there's a Q&A tool uh, within Zoom to ask any questions you may have um, as, as we go through the presentation today. We are reserving time at the end of the presentation um, for Q&A. You can use the raise my hand uh, feature or functionality within Zoom um, if you'd like to, to ask that question um, verbally, but please make sure to unmute yourself um, when you're done. Finally, we'll be posting this on uh, internet2.edu slash past events, as you see there, if you want to follow up on any of this afterwards, or feel free to email us um, whenever you have a question about uh, any of our programs, feel free to email us at netplus at internet2.edu. So today we have a great, uh, a great group of speakers joining us. Uh, they'll introduce themselves as um, as they jump in today, um, but I want to thank them for participating uh, in this virtual event and sharing their experiences with the Cloud Scorecard project um, and the development of this effort with you all today. Um, so as we get started, today's event is a culmination of quite a bit of community work um, and feedback from both higher ed and industry to get to this point. And I'm really excited to talk about what we can do together to support the adoption of cloud services to meet the needs of the research and education community. Um, there are so many cloud services that the only way we can navigate this ecosystem is by working together. Um, just like the research and education community has done uh, for the last 10 years with the NetPlus program and the last 25 years with Internet2. Uh, we're celebrating anniversaries of uh, both the organization and our NetPlus program this year. Uh, so it's exciting um, to be launching uh, launching the cloud scorecard this year. It's exciting to be launching our next generation infrastructure um, project this year. So, um, you know, Internet 2 is at its best when we connect people and ideas together to solve problems collaboratively uh, better than we could um, ourselves as individuals or ourselves as as organizations. And we can't solve these problems um, without without you all. Uh, and the Cloud Scorecard is a great example of that. And in order for this, this project and this effort to be successful, um, we're, we're going to need your, your support and your feedback uh, on, on this effort. And we'll talk a little bit later in the presentation about um, some ways to get involved. Before we start talking about what we've built um, and why you might want to use it, I want to talk a little bit about the context in which the Cloud Scorecard was created. Um, so if you go back the last several years, as we all know, there's been an explosion in growth in the use of cloud services on campus. There's been an explosion of growth of new and innovative companies offering cloud services uh, and solutions that could help research and education. And you'll hear from some of these companies uh, today um, on why the scorecard is important to them later in this, in this virtual event. Um, but in the backdrop of that environment, we as Internet2 and as the NetPlus program started having conversations with our members and our stakeholders about what the right place was for the NetPlus program in this dynamic. And, and we really heard two things. One, we need more NetPlus. Um, there is a, a trust or a confidence associated with NetPlus services because they've gone through a community evaluation process and because there's uh, community governance around these services, and that breeds confidence for both the supply and the demand side. We also heard a, a desire and a support to keep having a really deep strategic engagement with cloud, cloud service vendors and the importance of that for the research um, and education community. And those two dynamics, by the way, don't just exist in conversations that we've had in the NetPlus program with our stakeholders. It exists in many other community cloud conversations that I'm involved in and, and others, um, both uh, panelists and attendees alike um, on this virtual event are, are part of today. So we convened uh, chief information officers, other IT leadership, some of our leadership and governance groups together um, 
to talk about what we should do. And ultimately we decided it's really important for the Net Plus program. It was really important for the community to have that deep strategic engagement with service providers, with vendors. And there's only so far you can, you can scale that. What that is, for those of you who don't know, it's doing community service evaluations, bringing universities together to look at products and services. It's heavily negotiating contracts and pricing, and it's building communities of practice um, to support peer-to-peer -peer sharing, learning, and vendor management at scale. Doing those three things together is really what makes the NetPlus program unique. Um, just like cloud services have grown exponentially, so too have other community organizations been doing contracts. And, and we think, and what we've heard from our stakeholders is what makes NetPlus really unique is building that deep strategic engagement around the services. But we still needed to solve for number one, people want more NetPlus. So we had a problem. What are we gonna do with that? How do we scale the desire um, for people to see more services that have characteristics like NetPlus services while maintaining deep strategic engagement with these service providers. So what did we do? Our roots are all in higher ed. We did what any higher ed organization would do. We formed a committee to talk about it. Um, and um, it, all, all kidding aside, we put a great group of people together. We'll talk about who they are um, in, in a little bit. Um, and they, they spent a lot of time talking, engaging stakeholders on industry and higher ed about what the needs were to scale uh, to scale cloud services and cloud service standards. And ultimately that led us to the development of the cloud, cloud uh, scorecard. So the chair of that working group um, was, was nice enough to join us, uh, join us here today. Uh, Lauren Mollum, the chief information officer of Ball State. Lauren did a great job helping us uh, convene that group and, and also spent a lot of late nights with me at conferences back when we could do that, um, exploring ideas for, uh, for the creation of this uh, this effort. So with that, it's my pleasure to, to introduce uh, you all to Lauren, for those of you who don't know Lauren, um, and for Lauren to tell you all a little bit about uh, the design of the Cloud Scorecard and what it is. So Lauren, take it away. Well, thanks, Sean, and, and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lauren Malm, and I have the great good fortune to serve as the Chief Information Officer at Ball State University in Muncie, Indiana. And as Sean said, so I chaired the uh, working group that developed the, the initial scorecard um, questionnaire. This was a group, and as Sean said, this was a group that was pulled together to look at how we could leverage that great work that normally goes into developing uh, the services offered through the Net Plus program. And, and as Sean said, that's a very involved process. He's going to talk about that a little bit more and give you a little bit of the difference between what goes into the Net Plus program service offerings, and then how that differentiates from the scorecard. But uh, so I won't go into that now, other than to say uh, it's a very involved process. It takes a long time to do those, and uh, it really doesn't scale out to the to what the cloud demands. Uh, as Sean said, we've got thousands of services. All of our universities rely on hundreds of them to run our institutions, and it would be it would just be impossible to try and do Net Plus services for everything that we do. So our task as a group, as a committee then, was to look at how could we leverage those great, that, that great work that had gone into developing standards and um, you know, good contract terms, good, uh, offer, good service offerings, how could we leverage that work and then make that scalable? What would that look like if it was uh, done in such a way that it didn't rely on that long process to, uh, developing, you know, formal contract engagements uh, for for vendors across the industry. So that's what our that's what our group was charged with doing, um, and our group came together and and looked at a way we could do that uh, uh, using a different kind of a model. And then we called and we looked at several different uh, ways of doing this, um, and ultimately we settled on what we're going to describe to you today, which is this this cloud scorecard. So you could go to the next next slide there. Uh, a little bit of background on the cloud scorecard. Why is this important? So again, the, the explosive growth of services. There are so many cloud services today, it would be impossible for us to develop those deep net plus uh, type services for everything. The cloud scorecard we think is, is a great way, a great way of scaling that environment uh, to, to offer what I think will be a very valuable service to all of higher education. Um, I'll just give you though one example, uh, one personal anecdote of how this type of a service could be very valuable 
uh, for an institution like Ball State. So at the beginning of the pandemic, and you see the last thing there is reliance on cloud service during the pandemic. At the beginning of the pandemic, you know, we found ourselves at Ball State in a situation where we needed a new uh, uh, confer video conferencing environment. We were relying on one that really didn't, just really didn't meet our needs. We wanted to go to sort of a next generation one that was easier to use for students. And the pandemic really pushed us toward that. Um, if we would have had to do a process where we, we would have had to go out and figure out everything on our own, it would have taken us forever to do that. A service like a like a Net Plus uh, would allow us to buy something very quickly because it was, um, you know, it's been pre-negotiated. Everything's ready to go. But a cloud scorecard service would have also been really valuable for us at that time because what it would do, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what it does in just a few minutes, is it would allow us to quickly sort vendors that met our needs and then hone in on those that really met the specific requirements for higher education um, that you know are really important to us and. That's really, I think, going to be the power of the cloud scorecard is it's going to signal out to vendors what's important to higher education and allow us as consumers to sort those things. So uh, that's a little bit of the, the context. So go to the you can go to the next slide there. Um, so Internet 2, again, we created this, we created this uh, working group to look at this. What we came up with was a questionnaire um, that we submitted back to Internet 2 and recommended that they adopt that to build this discovery platform. So you can go on to the go on to the next slide and, and then uh, we're going to let Sean talk about this in detail. But just real briefly, our group came up with 39 questions in total across these areas, these uh, major service areas, and it, with the idea that vendors answering these questions would allow us to quickly sort through uh, vendor service offerings, identify responses to these types of questions, again, that are critical to us, and then pick the ones that match and meet our service needs. And, and I think this does two critical things. So first, what this does is it allows us to sort vendors that meet our needs. But secondly, it signals to vendors the key things that are important to us so that as they look at that scorecard, if they don't have uh, perhaps a good answer in one of these areas, it's telling them this is critical to us. So just to give you a specific example, identity and federation. Um, there's lots of vendors in, in different services that provide um, you know, services that, that don't have uh, SAML integration. So it, at a very low scale, if you're offering that to a small, very, very small group of people, it's not a problem. But scaling that up to an institution, without that, th those services are almost impossible to manage. And so if you gave me a stack of 10 vendors in a particular service, one of the key things I'm going to look at first is, is does it have SAML integration? And if I can quickly sort those without having you know, lengthy phone calls with 10 or 20 different vendors to figure that out, that's going to save a tremendous amount of time for me. And that's really the value of the scorecard. So I'll, let, I'll switch it over to Sean now and let him talk more in detail about these actual questions in the service areas and tell you a little bit more about what's in the scorecard and what we came up with as a committee. Thanks, Lauren. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to talk too much about too much about the alphabet soup. Uh, hopefully, these are uh, mostly terms that are familiar to everyone attending. And if uh, if they're not, we'll provide we'll provide the deck, and you can you can look them up. I pick up a little bit off of what what Orton said in terms of what are the use cases of the, the cloud scorecard and specifically what are the use cases of the directory um, that, that we'll be showing you today, which is the discovery platform. Um, the, the use case Lauren, uh, Lauren cited is a popular one we've heard of, wouldn't it be nice if I had a place where I could go and say, hey, I need a service that does this sort of identity um, integration meets this accessibility standard, meets this security standard, um, and I can develop that list of services. Or um, if, you know, if I'm Lauren and I'm a CEO and I get a call from a vendor and say, wow, this looks really interesting, I can go to the cloud scorecard and say, okay, it looks really interesting, but could I integrate it and adopt it on my environment? Um, by the way, PSA for Lauren and other CIOs, uh, don't call the CIO. Uh, call uh, call someone on the staff who's responsible for making recommendations for uh, for for such services. So a quick a quick quick aside PSA there. Um, so that's one popular use case we've heard that Lawrence talked about. The other popular use case we've heard related to the questions themselves is many of these questions have corresponding documents. Um, 
you know, the VPAT is a document, the HECVAT is a document, the SOC 2 is a document. So the question on the scorecard itself is, do you have this document, yes or no? There's a comments piece on the scorecard, which really gives, gives a vendor filling it out two options. So one, if the answer is no um, or not applicable, explaining why. Maybe hey, it's under development. We expect to have it in Q2 2022. Um, or, you know, it's not relevant because we're self-hosted, in which case we might not be a cloud service, but SOC 2 example. Um, Collecting those documents, we've heard from various people in information security and, and, and compliance takes so long. And one of the things we're encouraging vendors to do is provide instructions on how to request a copy of those documents. We're not actually hosting the documents because we know they change or they may require an NDA. Um, but having a pointer, whether it's a link to something like the HECVAT or your privacy policy, um, or, or having instructions on how to get one, that, that's really useful um, and for, for higher education and people who work in, in compliance to have the opportunity um, to go to a page like this and pull down the documents they need for an annual um, uh, evaluation of services on campus. So the last thing I'll say on this slide, it's 39 questions. One of the things we heard from uh, vendors as we went through this process was try to keep it manageable try to point to existing standards and existing questions versus creating your own. Um, and we really, as the working group, the working group really took that to heart, um, trying to keep this relatively short, relatively easy to fill out. Um, we, we have two, two folks here have worked on filling it out uh, that, that can talk about the timeline of that um, and point to existing known standards and documentation. Um, and we really tried to do that as part of developing the questionnaire. On the next slide, I, I talked a little bit about this in, in opening comments, but you know, many people who, um, who are attending this session may be familiar with NetPlus. Um, and Lauren also talked about some of these differences. So NetPlus, typically um, you know, high investment, high value activity um, in terms of the amount of time to get a NetPlus service in the portfolio. And I talked a little bit about our goal of keeping that as a small service. Um, so at, we can have deep strategic engagement at a community scale. The cloud scorecard, we can basically adopt an unlimited number of services for, for visibility and, and support. Um, and that's the big difference between these two, between these two programs. Um, I'm excited for the opportunity in the future for popular cloud, cloud scorecards to become net plus services um, as we see that there's community interest in, uh, in adopting services. So finally, in, in sort of our, our first part of this presentation, um, talking about the background, I just want to thank the working group members who put in a tremendous amount of time into this, um, into this effort. If we go to the next slide, please, there it is. Um, you know, invested time in writing questions, in writing a final report, in going out and talking to peers in higher ed um, and, and vendors and those in industry. So thank you to everyone on this slide. Um, for all of your for all of your efforts and all of your work. So now we move to the announcement phase. Uh, the cloud scorecard, the cloud scorecard pilot. Um, unlike an Apple event, you can access the cloud scorecard today. Um, you don't have to wait two weeks for shipping. Um, and uh, unlike uh, unlike maybe some other events, um, we're or maybe like some other events, we're shipping a project in pilot. Um, and, and we want to be be really deliberate about that, that we're building, um, we want to be engaged with the community to build something to meet our stakeholders' needs. And our, our thought process along the lines of delivering a pilot was, it's easier to think about what you need and what you want when you can actually see something as a starting point. So that's why we're launching the pilot today. On the next slide, um, I, I talked early on about this has been an ongoing process. Um, you know, we started back in, in 2019, quote unquote, when the world was normal. Um, and we did get sidetracked a little bit by some of the events of, uh, some of the events of 2020. But as, as the, uh, as the Van Gogh quote on the previous slide said, we were deliberate about trying to make sure, um, there was a community need, there was a desire from the community, there was a desire from vendors, 
um, that this aligned with other community projects and other things, other organizations beyond internet to um, are, are and were doing. So we're confident in that. So we are, we are excited today uh, to, launch, to launch our pilot. And as I talked about, as we move to the next slide, um, the reason we're doing a pilot um, is really to help serve as a market survey and requirements gathering exercise. We definitely want to test the interest on both the supply, uh, supply and demand side. Um, I know I'm personally excited by the number, uh, the number of companies that have already filled out uh, scorecards, large, small, private, publicly traded, uh, popular in higher ed, new to higher ed. It's a great diversity of service providers. Um, and, and we know we need to, you know, we need to build, um, you know, we may need to build a progressive web application um, in the future to meet all these various needs. So we want to understand what those needs are, what that would cost, and then have a community consultation about should we build that. Um, with that, uh, my colleague, uh, Tara Jenis, and Tara, you can introduce yourself, um, is, is going to take you through a little bit more. Um, about our pilot, about the steps uh, that it would take to uh, to participate as as an industry. Uh, if if you're an industry and interested in getting listed, so Tara, take it take it away. Thank you, Sean. Uh, Tara Jenis. I work in the NetPlus program, uh, program development manager. And one of the projects I've been working on with Sean and my colleague Quinn is the Cloud Scorecard pilot program. And what it really is is two different pieces to it. There's the cloud scorecard questionnaire that we've been talking about, the, the, the questions that were developed by the working group. Um, and something to note here at, is that this cloud scorecard is available for anyone to use. It's licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, so it's share alike. And um, we expect that universities will start asking for this um, and putting it in their RFPs and RFIs uh, as kind of a, a baseline for vendors to, to meet or to respond to at least. Um, so that's the one component is the scorecard questionnaire itself. And then what we do with that information is put it into our cloud scorecard directory which as we've said, it's really a discovery platform. Um, the pilot is hosted on an internet to wiki site in Confluence. So it requires in common login or creation of a guest ID. And we'll go through that a little bit more in detail on the demo. Um, and basically for, from a vendor perspective, you've got the cloud scorecard questionnaire to complete and an MOU, uh, short MOU to sign. And that's how you get involved in the, the project and the pilot. Um, so today we're going to hear from a couple of our vendors about their experience and working with us on the, the Cloud Scorecard questionnaire and MOU and the, the process to be engaged in it. But quite impressive uh, visual here of the logos that are involved. As Sean said, we have a wide variety, diverse companies, um, organizations that have been working with us over the past couple of months to complete their cloud scorecard submissions. Um, and we have many more coming. There are a lot of, of companies that we're still talking to that are reviewing the documentation. We're part of the way there with uh, a few of the companies at the bottom. So it's, it's a rolling kind of admission to this pilot program. And we look forward to uh, adding to the, the directory as, as soon as we get further engaged with some other organizations. So, um, I'd like to kind of talk a little bit about what the process is to, to get engaged. So the first step is to express your interest as a vendor and participate in the cloud scorecard by emailing us at cloud-scorecard at internet2.edu. And as I mentioned, there's an MOU that we'll send you to review as well as the questionnaire so that you can review those in advance and then um, you know, once the MOU is signed, we'll send you a link to fill out the final questionnaire to submit to us. We ask, and something that, you know, sometimes vendors need a little time in advance to, to set this up, a dedicated email address to track the inquiries you're getting from the cloud scorecard. And why this is important is as a vendor, we think that one of the the benefits of participating in this program is that you'll be able to capture interest from the higher ed and research community. 
And in order to do that, to, to track that, um, we'd like you to, to collect those inquiries and responses. Um, and that's part of the, the MOU is that our expectation that we'll get that type of feedback from the vendor community. Um, so once you've submitted your responses and reviewed your entry on the wiki, uh, you're, you're in the directory and um, we keep teasing you with what this directory looks like. You're gonna see it shortly, I promise in just a few minutes. Um, but throughout the process, we really want you to uh, have an open dialogue conversation with us about your feedback from a vendor perspective. We'll also be measuring feedback from the community perspective. Uh, it's really important that we're meeting you know, both audiences needs um, and of course, you know, there'll be needs to update your scorecard. Hopefully you can use the scorecard actually as sort of a blueprint. If you're not already doing some of these things that higher ed um, needs in your delivery of services, um, this will give you an idea. And we're not expecting that um, every vendor is going to be able to comply 100% with what's on the scorecard. It's it's some of it's not applicable to certain services, but um, but certainly the, hopefully this gives vendors a guide to what they could be working on to better meet the needs of the community. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce Tyler Long from Cloud Tamer, who has some exciting news for us, but, um, but also will share her experience in working with us on the Cloud Scorecard submission. Thanks, Tyler. Awesome. No, thank you, Tara, and thank you, team. Um, we're super excited to be here today and to be participating in this program. Um, my name is Tyler Long, and I am the Public Sector Channel Manager for Cloud Tamer. Um, so actually just wanted to join this webinar this afternoon for a few minutes to share more about, um, again, our experience in being one of the first few vendors to join this pilot program, um, talk about what we're hoping to take away from it all, and then share a little bit more about how we're um, currently helping organizations alike in this space to date. So with that, um, some of you may already be familiar with Cloud Tamer or are already leveraging our application, but if you haven't heard of us before, we are a complete cloud lifecycle management solution. And so we help folks actually provision new cloud accounts, whether that's in AWS, Azure, or Google, and ensure that from day one, you have visibility across the board into who owns what. Um, so from an inventory and asset management perspective, um, it provide visibility into who owns it or who's accountable for it. So we understand identity is key, particularly to this community, um, as well as providing all of the financial visibility into what your projects are spending. Are they spending their money wisely? Do you guys have those budgets in place, whether it's pulling from various grants um, or whatever cloud budgets you'd need to allocate down all the way to those different projects? And last but certainly not least, ensuring that you are set up in a secure and compliant manner, again, from day one when you go to vend those new cloud accounts. So with all of that said, I do also want to share, I know Tara alluded to this, but um, it's an exciting day for our company. We just announced our corporate rebrand. Um, so with that said, going forward, Cloud Tamer is going to be known as Kion. Um, you may actually hear me interchange the two names here today, but it's important to note that the technology is going to remain the same, the people remain the same, um, and our mission of making folks' lives easier in the cloud remains the same as well. We've just got a revamped uh, look and feel and new logo there. So with all of that said, I do actually want to talk through just the history of how we came to life, because um, I think it's important to share that public sector was really where we were born from. Um, on the last side, I think you can see we were founded in 2018, but the technology itself actually dates back to 2016. Um, we formally spun out of a systems integrator that was doing work in the intelligence community, and so really fed and brought but federal was our bread and butter um, to get going. And in recent years, we've made a really big push as a company to expand our footprint into public sector as a whole. And so um, we were fortunate enough to work with Penn State as one of the first universities to adopt um, Cloud Tamer, now Kion. And what we found in working with Penn State, um, they had come to Cloud Tamer at the time to help solve some of their governance at scale needs. They were spinning up new projects in the cloud, moving workloads over, and um, you know, they didn't want their stuff to go sideways. So we were able to work with them to get their cloud under control and help put in those proactive measures um, for them going forward. 
Now, with all of that said, um, again, fortunate enough to work with PSU, what our team learned was the collaboration among the schools was really unlike anything that we had seen. I mean, huge testament to Internet2 and these programs that they're putting together um, because word of mouth really traveled quickly. Um, from there, um, we, Penn State was gracious enough to share their experiences in leveraging Kion's application to other research institutions. And so we had customer referral after customer referral come in for other folks. Um, that were interested in learning more about how we could help solve some of their similar challenges. Um, and so bringing this kind of full circle, when we were presented the opportunity and had first heard about the cloud scorecard itself, uh, we wanted to jump right on the opportunity, not only to get some additional exposure to the broader community, uh, we did see this as a really good targeted marketing opportunity for our team, um, but we also wanted this to be a learning opportunity for our company. So as we grow to take that feedback from the community, I'm sure other vendors alike and other uh, software solution providers that are out there, um, similar to you guys, we our development efforts are driven by customer demand, prospective needs, um, and things that you guys are looking for. So to be able to take that feedback and help advocate um, and drive Kion's future developments was, was really important to us. Um, and also, even in working with the team, um, we were able to share some feedback as well. So Kion is a self-hosted solution. I know, I think Sean and Tara both mentioned that. Um, so in going through the cloud scorecard, some of the stuff was not as applicable to um, our deployment model because we are not a traditional SaaS product. We install natively within your own cloud environment. So we're completely walled off from the data and don't have any visibility into your instance of our software. But that said, we were able to provide that feedback to the team. Um, and I want to say with both uh, the MOU as well as the questionnaire itself, um, only took our team probably a couple hours, if that, to complete. Um, so very easy, very straightforward to get engaged. And I would um, welcome and recommend to any other vendors that are out there, um, regardless of if you're active in higher ed or not, I think this is a really great opportunity for you to share who you are, what you do, and how you can help the community. Um, so with that, I know I'll be around for the Q&A if anybody has any questions about our experience overall um, or anything else about the technology itself, but we're really excited to be participating today. So Tara, I'll pass it back to you. Thanks, Tyler. And um, we're excited to have our next speaker from a, a startup company, emerging company that's come out of higher ed, um, Ambi, and we're going to hear from Soham Ketan. Thank you so much, Soham. Awesome. Thank you, Tara. Um, hi, everyone. So we're uh, probably at a bit of a smaller scale than the previous company, um, but I'd say that's probably the beauty about uh, this program. Um, uh, I, I started Ambi when I was a senior in college because the student experience was just not up to par with the tools that I had grown up with. I was used to apps that uh, loaded more quickly, uh, that were more intuitive, that were more fluid. Um, college was filled with sort of a web 1.0 experience for me. Uh, everything was flat. There were portals and, and, and emails and the like. And I was used to being able to share things from with, with, with a click and, and, and see things in a feed, et cetera. Um, so that's where the idea of Ambi was born. Can we take sort of the consumer app experience, which is pillar one, provide a consumer grade experience. And can we uh, build it for higher ed, which means can we expose our API can we start sending um, sort of uh, intelligent data to universities to power their BI tools? Um, and can we actually fundamentally change the, the, the engagement, equa engagement equation um, that um, both colleges and students are seeing from their ed tech tools? Can we get students to love their education experience? And can we get colleges to get real-time insights and data into what students are doing? Um, you know, when COVID hit and, and students sort of went, went, went home, a lot of schools uh, told me they realized how invisible their students are to them when they're not on campus. Um, and this just heightens the need for like this real time window into, into what students are doing. But, but while maintaining privacy uh, for them and, and while helping them feel like they own their accounts and it's going to be a lifelong account, um, which, which eventually sort of, you know, Ambi becomes your alumni network as well. Um, so, so, um, that's so 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 as you can see it's 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 a new product we're we're looking to solve this sort of experience and 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 this web 1.0 problem by building a digital first mobile first product um and 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 it's a bold bet in many ways um and and for us having um 
an org such as I2 really like streamline the process in terms of, hey, here's like, you know, the, the compliance documents that you need and, and, and you can do it once and sort of refer to this again and again with all the, all the I2 members is, has been really helpful for us. Um, uh, you know, like Tyler said, the process was super easy, which, which I appreciate. Um, we've worked with Columbia University. We've worked with the Brigham Young uh, University School of Music. We've worked with a ton of universities. Um, we also actually sponsor um, uh, a network of student body precedents across over 50 colleges. And, and we're collecting their voices into, into what our students saying uh, needs to change in higher ed. And, and we want to be at the forefront of that because we're a company founded by and for students. Um, but, but, but my point is that for, for companies like ours with, with a young leadership team, sometimes it's, it's daunting to, 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 to sell into these big schools. And, and, and I, too, I, I think this whole cloud scorecard has just made, it, made that easy for us and allowed us to focus on our value add, which is beautiful software. Um, so, you know, um, if you're a vendor, it's a no brainer to apply, honestly. Um, if, 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 if you're in higher ed, obviously uh, you, you know how great I2 is. Um, you know, from, from as, as a startup, uh, it's great to be part of this progressive group. Um, and um, yeah, you know, we're, we're, we're uh, still looking for close uh, partners uh, to join us on the Ambi mission um, to help inform the product and uh, just to, you know, even give us inputs if you have ideas on how we can improve the student experience. I would love to talk to you. I'm the co-founder and CEO. Um, um, there's some stuff on our website that's out of date, but, but our I2 directory has the latest. Uh, so feel free to reach out from there. My email's on the bottom right, um, you know, LinkedIn, um, any which way that uh, uh, if you have any questions or just a conversation, I'd, I'd love to hear your input on, on how to improve the student experience. I'm always all ears and, you know, Sean, Tara and team, thank you guys so much for putting this together. Um, yeah, cheers. <laughs> Thanks again, um, Soham and um, Tyler for sharing your experience. Uh, we look forward to hearing from vendors um, after this call and, and welcome you to reach out to us. So next uh, up is the, the exciting part, um, uh, what we're building and what it looks like and how you can access it and hopefully how you can help us. Thanks, Tara. Hi, everybody. I'm Corn Valiant. I am a Net Plus PM. And I was working with Sean and Tara to help build um, the pilot directory for the community to use. So as Sean mentioned earlier, we're starting with a sm uh, smaller, so we, um, we're hosting our scorecard directory on our Confluence. Because it's on Confluence, we are requiring um, for you to log in. If you're from the community and you have, a, if, you're into, if your institution have, is participating in Common, you can log in using your in Common or Campus SSO. And if you are a vendor or a provider or from an institution who isn't um, utilizing in common right now, you can register using um, for an internet to guest logon ID or use your Google account. And right now, um, we're really using this pilot to gather feedback from both the community and from industry. So with that in mind, I am going to start sharing the directory. Hi, in this video, I will walk you through the Cloud Scorecard Directory Pilot Wiki. <laughs> to access the wiki, you will need to log in. If your institution is, is an in common participant, all you have to do is select the name of your institution in the drop down menu. Once your institution is selected, you will be directed to your institution's SSO page to log in. If you don't have an in common participant ID, you can log in with your Google account or you could register for an Internet2 guest login. For this demo, I will be logging in with my Internet2 guest login ID. After logging in, you will be taken to the Cloud Scorecard Directory pilot page. On this page, you can read about the project, including the background on why we created the scorecard. As you scroll down the page, you can see the full listing of all the vendors that have signed the MOU and completed a questionnaire. You can sort the table by clicking the header of each column. You can sort 
by vendor, categories, or its description. You can also search for keywords in the search box. The search box will, will return relevant scorecards. Once you click on the vendor you're interested in, you will be taken to the service details page. On this page, you will see all of the vendor's responses to the questionnaire. Some of the information you'll see will include a service, a brief service overview, feature highlights. You can also see whether or not they have a VPAT. We encourage all vendors to um, put in whether or not the VPAT is available upon request and when it was last updated. Similar responses are also included for identity and federation, network and connectivity, security and privacy, technical integrations, and common legal and contractual terms that are important to the research and higher ed communities. As you're reviewing the scorecard, we encourage you to give us your feedback. You can email any questions or suggestions to cloud-scorecard at internet2.edu. You can also find this email address on the, on the homepage of the directory. And then uh, from a campus perspective, we're hoping that this helps you streamline your discovery of new services and helps you um, at, at, in one place be able to help find all the information how to gather those requirement question, requirement documents so that it can help you streamline um, going to procurement and asking to procurement. And um, as you're going onto the website or onto the wiki, what we're looking for from, in, from a community perspective is feedback on are these the right questions? Are these the right areas that we that we need to be asking the vendors for? And are we missing anything? Right. And then, like Ashan mentioned, um, are there any feature requests from a, a production discovery platform that we should be looking at developing or or creating so that it makes the experience easier for the campuses and the institutions to find services? And then from the vendor perspective is we really would like to know, um, are there other things that you um, that the industry would like to be listed to help communities know more about your, your particular service? We had a number of, uh, we had a number of questions submitted. So why don't we, why don't we pivot to some Q and A um, and Tara was going to lead us through our, our Q and A. So Tara, you get the, you have, you have all the power here of deciding which questions get asked and who do they get asked to first on the panel. All right. Um, I have a question from Sarah Braun in the Q&A. And um, Lauren, I think you're starting to type an answer. But what um, she's asking is how this is related to the um, HECVAT and the um, cloud broker as being other you know, risk assessment type tools that are used in higher ed. Yeah, I was gonna, and, and others can jump in. I was just gonna say that the the cloud scorecard uh, absolutely, and we've had this question a couple of times, and I'm glad Sarah asked it. But we are absolutely not trying to replace the HECVAT in any way. In fact, the cloud scorecard references the HECVAT. It's one of the important questions that we ask to uh, determine if a person has one. So the scope of the cloud scorecard is much broader. Um, you know, the HECVAT is is very focused on information security issues. Um, and we we want the cloud scorecard though to be a much broader and also it's not as as deep the cloud scorecard or the uh, heck that is a it's an extensive document in and of itself um, and the cloud scorecard is really again it's that it's that 39 questions but one of them is uh, do you have a heck that and that's one of the questions we want to know about uh, as we're using it so um, again it's not trying to replace it but it, and in fact it leverages it so yeah, and I'll, I'll, I mean, Lauren, I think sufficiently answered, answered the question, but um, it, what I'll, what I'll share, you know, what I'll share as well is just a, an, an emphasis on the cloud scorecard being a um, sort of a, a baseline document of here's what we expect across various different categories of cloud services, while the heck that deep, deep dives into important areas um, where there's additional control, you know, about specific controls um, and, and specific aspects in information security. And, and ultimately, I think the vision is other, other areas as well. So that is, that is intended to be a, a deep document. This is intended to be a broad document. Um, and supporting the, the HECVAT as part of that is, is very important to us. I think our hope is that the scorecard gets 
the heck that and specifically the cloud broker index more visibility um, as a really important ses assessment for those who are trying to have their products adopted and, um, and kept in higher education. Thanks, Sean. We have another question from Tom Dugas of uh, if you can answer, what can we do to enlist vendors to participate in the scorecard? How can we sell it to them? Well, we could have a working website uh, that we could show them. That would certainly uh, that would certainly help. Um, but no, in, in all seriousness, and, and Lauren, we've talked about this extensively. So you may you may want to. I'm going to do just a broad, and then I'll, I'll let you dive into it. Um, I think the biggest thing that people can do is, is ask for it. Um, there, there are other ideas in terms of how to integrate the questionnaire that I'll, I'll let Lauren talk about, but I, I think ask for it. And I think um, using the message that this is something you have to do anyways is, is really important as well. I mean, these are, these are all questions that all the various universities ask anyways. We're just trying to document it in one place. We're trying to help help scale answering the question. So my my sort of summary answer is ask for it um, and to adopt it. Um, it is you know the the cost of sale when you talk to when you talk to vendors and I'm going to look at, at Tyler and Soham as I say this you know the, the cost of sale to higher ed is very high because um, pick a state. You know, different state supported or state institutions within the same state may have different questionnaires, um, may have different contract terms and conditions and addendums. And it's not it's not even stand. Things are not even always standardized at that level. So documents like this, documents like the HECVAT, adopting these as standards um, and being consistent around that in higher ed lowers the cost of sale and it puts us in a position to say we you know we have lowered the cost of sale we're not just coming looking for for a handout you know higher ed always asks for lowest price best service that's the you know that's the ask maybe that's uh, i'm looking at our, our vendors and maybe that's the ask of every customer but it's certainly it's certainly the higher ed ask um so adopting standards reducing that cost of sale reducing duplication of effort for the universities like we've been Higher ed's been hit really hard by current budgetary and, and other, you know, aspects. So having a questionnaire you can go pick out versus having someone else pick it out and having someone else collect it. Um, I think that's really valuable. But Lauren, we've talked about some specific examples of ideas you have and ways you're already thinking about doing it at Ball State. So maybe you can add to that a little bit. Yeah, there's and there's a couple of things, and we need to flush this out just a little bit more. But I think there's a real opportunity to use the cloud scorecard and reference it as we customers, like Ball State, uh, put out things like RFIs and RFPs. And so I would say to anyone who's publicly posting an RFI, for example, where you're asking the community to send you information about a particular topic, one of the things to ask to do is to complete that cloud scorecard. And what I, one of the things I've talked with Sean about is, is actually revising our uh, RFP to include a um, request that vendors complete it. And there's, there's no cost to use the questions in the scorecard. So there's no barrier to entry, uh, you know, in your procurement process, or at least there shouldn't be for using, you know, asking someone to complete that questionnaire. Again, it's not, there's no cost for doing it. It's uh, freely available. So um, just doing that and getting that uh, included um, you know, I think I don't see any reason why I wouldn't add that to my template and just use that every single time I put something out. And then it really, what that does then is it just adds to the community every time someone, every time someone completes those. So that's, um, th and there's some, there's a couple other things we could do, but I think those just right off the top, those are two things I know I could do probably right away with uh, very little effort at no cost that would, I think, really get the word out and maybe, you know, increase adoption. So. Thank you both. Um, we don't have any other questions in the Q&A. Does anybody have anything they want to ask live? Raise your hand. I think I think we're going to pivot. Um, we're going to pivot to uh, always, always keep a always keep a backup of, of your work. Um, so I, I think I think Quinn's at least going to show us what a completed uh, what a completed scorecard looks like as an example. Hi, everybody. Um, so this isn't um, the web page, obviously, but this is a PDF 
of what a completed uh, questionnaire looks like. And this is what, if you clicked on TwinGate on our homepage, this is the, the TwinGate to service. You can see there's a little bit of service overview and their feature highlights and contact information. But you can see um, when we were talking earlier about the different areas that the questionnaire um, includes, this is how um, it will, you can see, you know, here's the question, here's the response, and if there's any additional explanation that the provider, the vendor is providing. You can also see when um, the scorecard was last updated, so you can see how recent information is. And this isn't what we wanted to show you, but you can see the breadth of the different types of questions we're asking, and we're hoping that this can be useful for you at your institutions. And um, you can see on here where, um, you know, some of the questions that is commonly asked right now for cloud providers is, do you expose any functionality with an API, with your APIs? And if you have yes, we ask, you, we ask the, uh, the vendor to provide either a link or some information on how um, people can get access to that. And then, um, you know, if for TwinGate, you know, one of the questions that is commonly asked right now for cloud providers is, um, is your source open code? Is your source um, source code available as open source, right? And then for TwinGate, it's, it wasn't an e easy yes or no. So what um, TwinGate chose to do was there are some components that are open source. So this is this is a way for vendors to give a little bit more clarity to to their responses rather than just yes or no. And um, that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope that uh, once the the directory is live again, that everybody will go to it and be able to log in and let us know what your feedback is. But that was just a quick glance at the, um, how broad and how uh, informative the scorecard can be. And we really are looking for feedback. Let us know if there are common, common questions that, are, that you at your institution is always asking for information on. Submit it to us and then we'll work with our working group to see if it's applicable and how we can um, integrate it into the scorecard. That's it, back to you, Tara and John. Thanks. So I, I think our I think our last um, our, our last part of the presentation here is is just a, um, a a call to action. We will uh, we will email all the attendees uh, when the when the site is back up, or actually everyone who registered, um, and encourage you to take a look at it. Um, but we we have two um, we we have two other calls to action. Um, one would be. Um, please consider self-nominating yourself to join the Cloud Scorecard uh, working group. We have um, a number of those. Uh, Quinn, you can go to the next slide. We have a number of um, people. People have re-upped off uh, the initial group I showed you, but we're looking for more people to join the working group and help us um, and help us drive and steer this program. Um, and then provide us your feedback. Um, you know, use cases and and stories that you may have about using this, and you can reach out to us at cloud-scorecard at internet2.edu um, with any feedback you have, or if you'd like to like to join the working group. And with that, um, unless there are any other questions, I think we're happy to give you, happy to give you three minutes back to your afternoon. And, um, and thank you for joining. Have a great rest of your day.